Okay, it is Monday, June 22nd, 1.30 p.m. We are at the start of a very exciting adventure of the Noel Rockmore Project book being put together inside our lovely spacious office in Mashpee, Massachusetts. And these are the walls that will soon contain the Rockmore book. And I will try to give you an overview of how this is going to go. And this is me, Rich Marvin, uh, your host for this interesting project that we're about to do. A little bit complicated. It'll make more sense when we start putting things up. And that is the project for today is to actually first create the timeline and then we'll check in at the end of the day and we'll see how far we got. And here's Team Marvin. All right, we are at the um, office and now we're going to see the work that has been accomplished here. This is Connie, Hello. Who, who is transcribing interviews even as we speak. Zach has actually done this massive amount of work. Floyd and Gladys, that's to come. And um, as you can see, this just represents Shirley's paintings. And we've already created a little star system means that there's a duplicate. This is Rich Marvin and this is the end of day one, putting up the things. There's a lot of extra talking going on, that's meaning this audio isn't going to be great. This is me at day one and we're, uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. This is me day one, day one. I'll be limited to tell about it. Anyway, uh, what, uh, what we hope to be able to do is visually see Rockmore through artwork times all of the things that we have. So this is just Shirley's, beginning of Shirley's collection, and theoretically we have much more to come, and uh, that's it. Lots of work to do. <laughs> And T. Marvin has brought in professional lighting equipment. So day two, we've got T's best side. And we are here on day two with a very special surprise visitor, Shirley Marvin, whose uh, fastidiousness in collecting all of these works has led to this project, has joined us here today for her first look as we start to put all of her artwork that she has collected, and the concept is as follows. We have taken all of your artworks from your books, from your painting collections, and we have put them in chronological order, starting with the 40s and 50s, this is 55 to 58, 59 to 62. Then what we'll do next is we will identify all of the different groups that each painting fits into. For example, this one of the brain uh, uh, surgeon right here. Uh -huh. This would be in the 1962 category. It would be in his medical series because he often did medical series. It would also be in the, uh, the backgrounds where he did these little backgrounds. Uh, I forget what you call them, but the cityscapes. Yeah. In many of his works he did cityscapes. So that would be a category. Um, this one up here, the figure of, this would be once again in the 60s, early, uh, early, early. early 60s, we yeah. might put it as part of the table series. And, uh, and actually until we get all of them out on the walls, we don't know what all the different categories. Obviously there's a New York City series, there's the New Orleans series. We'll create a database where anybody could search on anything they want. If they wanted to search on all table series of not just your collection, but all of the collections we documented, and every one of Rockmore's table series would come up. That's a good idea. It's better to do it by uh, subject matter than by date. Because right. Because the subject matter uh, varied. Right, because if Rockmore could flip uh, subject matters on a dime. That's right. So we went from one subject to the next. This right. is fabulous. Fabulous. Mom said it fabulous. was fabulous, therefore. It is fabulous. There you go. That's my boy. That's my girl. It's so at the end of day two, Thanks to Zach's diligence and T's diligence in figuring out some technical glitches, we are up through about 1969 of just Shirley's works. Now keep in mind, we have three times as much work that we will eventually be putting up. The first thing we're doing is we're putting Shirley's work up first, and then we're going to figure out the categories 
of everything. So we'll have the, the New York scenes, the table series, uh, the San Francisco ones, uh, the uh, family and friends, because he often painted family and friends, the Jazz Fest, the Jazz Musicians, Mike Stark, Bill Russell, it will go on and wow. on, but we'll be able to figure out. Oh, and he also included little moons, so there'll be, if a little moon is included in it, uh, <laughs> then, uh, then he will uh, do it. So that's it. T and Mom, just hanging out, uh, and tomorrow we'll come back and there'll be much more work. Tomorrow. 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 This is Taylor, and she worked today. Yep, uh, I did about five hours um, cutting out pictures of Rockmore's works and putting them up on over, spanned over four or five walls. We have all the dates labeled, and we're making a giant timeline, a visual timeline of all his pictures so we can look at them and see them in groups of date and uh, kind of get a feeling of what Rockmore was feeling, doing, thinking over his years through his own eyes rather than through words or linearly, so it's and useful. And you're color coding uh, Oh yeah, and color coding it by uh, whose collection it was and whose collection it came from. Thank that was you. Taylor's innovation. Thank you. And we are here on day three with T. Marvin who has set up the camera and made uh, all of that process easier so all we have to do is flick on lights and use the tripod which is a nice innovation and she's going to Briefly tell us on the editing process. All the little clips that we took, shoot during the day, bring them back in, trim them, maybe put titles on them, and then make them into one, say, uh, four-minute clip that could be used on YouTube or something like that. Eventually, after we have all of the process done, we'll take all the smaller clips and we'll make one great big um, movie, I guess. Right. Do documenting, documenting what we're doing here. Absolutely, so that in case anybody else has a uh, undiscovered master of the last half of the 20th century that they want to document, <laughs> they'll know how to do it. <laughs> they'll know how to do it. It's, right. a, it's a long process, it's, it takes a lot of time and a lot of work, but it'll be worth it. Absolutely. Thank you. We are on day three, June 24th, Wednesday, and much work has been done. We are now uh, have Shirley Marvin's collection completely on the walls, uh, and we also have two other major collections, and that's been the bulk of the effort, and as you can see, um, we are starting to fill up the walls. We've done some color coding to indicate the various other collections so that we can uh, document as we go. We actually allocated so far enough space. Obviously, since we're only one-third of the way through, there's going to be some rearrangement, but we're on the right track here. And we're very excited about it, and soon we will put together the database that will enable us to catalog each and every one of these little squares into a master database that can be cross-referenced and cross-researched. So that's it. We'll take one look at the other wall, and then we'll come right back. One of the exciting discoveries of today is the amount of work that we have from the last couple of years of his life. looks like uh, between these three collections, from 91 to 93, which would have been in the last five years of his life, uh, we have plenty of work uh, to look at. Uh, there's more to come. That's where a lot of the other collections are going to fill in. So that's it for day three, and we'll be back soon with more updates. And we've had many technical glitches along the way. We continue to have some, but we just fight right through those. That's part of the deal of documentation.